We've got a battle of the unbeatens for you on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel tonight as Roy visits Logan for Logan's homecoming game. Both teams are 4-0 and and riding high coming into the season. Logan kind of coming out of nowhere. Nobody expected them to be really all that much this year, but they're 4-0 and and putting up a lot of points offensively, and the defense looks like it's back. As for the Royals, a very young team, but they play well together. They've got some underclassmen that are really, really producing uh, for this team out there. And one of these teams is going to go home with a loss tonight. It should be a great battle on the game of the week. Roy looking to go 5-0 and for the first time since 1975 when a guy by the name of McMahon played quarterback for the Royals. So it's been a while. So don't go anywhere. we got a good one coming up. It's the game of the week on the Valley Channel coming up next. Centennial. The only training bike that inclines and declines, rides anywhere in the world, and measures your energy output. With Google Street View and a 7-inch touchscreen, draw your map and ride every tour stage or anywhere in the world. The TDF responds to terrain changes with a full 20% incline, 20% decline. An integrated advanced power meter measures your exact watts. And silent magnetic resistance means the training bike making all the noise in the cycling world sounds like this. You can't train like this on any other bike. Call or go online today to get the Proform TDF Centennial with zero down plus free upgrade to rush shipping. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Cash Valley Hospital, your choice in healthcare. The Salt Lake Express, door to door service to and from Salt Lake every hour. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. Immaculate Homes, now your home. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons, Premier Apartment Homes, Live, Work, Play and Celebrate. PR Graphics for all your promotional graphics needs. Alpine Cleaning and Restoration, we respond, we restore, you relax. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. Well, they're already rocking and rolling here at Logan High. A crimson Field on the Logan High campus just outside the Recreation Center at the south end of Logan. I'm Eric Olson. With me, Jeff Anderson, our special, our special guest this week. Jeff Omar, you Aggie fans may recognize that name. Jeff Omar Anderson played for the for Utah State on the basketball team, and but you've got a football background. You told me that's your first love when you were playing in high school at Bear River. Yeah, when I grew up, you know, I, 
I played all the sports, but football was always my favorite. But my body type and stuff uh, kind of led me more towards basketball, but I've always loved football. And I'm just glad to be here, and I think we're going to have a great game tonight. Well, we're happy to have you. A couple of undefeated teams, and we talked first with Coach Mike Favero. I spoke with him just a few minutes ago about tonight's contest. Coach, I hate to be maybe sound disrespectful, but it used to be that you'd look at Roy on the schedule and maybe sometimes think, maybe, well, that's a win right there. I don't think you can really think that much anymore. This this Roy team's making a lot of noise. Yeah, they are. They've got a gr group of under underclassmen, in particular the junior class, which has been very, very strong throughout the youth leagues. And I don't think anybody who's watched them play over the years in those youth leagues is surprised how good they are. Well, tell me, let's let's talk a little bit about what you expect to see out of them. The Skidmore kid, I know a couple of colleges are looking at him and have had him out for some visits, and, and he can do things, but they can also run the ball. Yeah, they're going to show us a mix of wing tee offense and trying to run a little bit of trap and what we call uh, buck sweep and belly and weak side iso, and they're going to try to establish their run game with the wing tee, and then they're also going to spread it out. So they're unique in a standpoint that they mix the wing tee with some spread formations and try to be equally efficient. And as you said, the Skidmore kid, now this is his third year. He's only a junior. He's been playing quarterback for him for three years. So they're very, very talented. You guys have been laying in the weeds. Not everybody picked you to be 4-0 and at this point in the season, but things seem to be clicking. What's going right and what can get better? Well, we've got great team chemistry and guys are uh, carrying out their assignments, man. We talk about winning the technique and playing with great synergy, meaning everybody combining to become one great product. And it's a process and uh, we, 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 we've got a very, very tough team and we're playing well and we hope to hope to continue it. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck tonight. Thank you, Herc. Thanks, man. No one should be surprised as the fall colors start to come out in the mountains above Logan. No one should be surprised that a Mike Vero coach team is off to a pretty good start, Jeff. They're, he's got these guys coached up each and every each and every year, but they were, they were picked maybe to have a little bit of a down year, but they're doing well so far this year. You, you know, Eric, I, that's so true. You know, every year I've been around Logan a long time, and, and Coach Favaro's teams are always just consistent. They're always right there for the region championships and even into the state playoffs. So, you know, this is just another example of, of him putting the right people in the right places. And here they are 4-0, and they're, they're off to a wonderful start again. Mike Favaro looking for win number 125 tonight. On the other sideline, Fred Fernandez is looking for win number 102. And I spoke with him a short time ago. Coach off to a 4-0 start, looking for 5-0 with a very young team. And they've, you know, they had kind of a miracle win there down at Fremont. Most people have heard about that. But guys taking care of business. What's been your uh, key to success thus far? A lot of luck. Uh, we had two games, we got lucky and won on the last play of the game. Uh, we played a little bit better last week, uh, at least early, against Mountain Crest. And then ended up giving up 21 fourth quarter points that... Uh, didn't sit real well, but uh, yeah, they're playing pretty good. They're playing pretty good. I, I hope we can play good enough to hang with Logan, though. Who are the guys we should really watch for? We hear all about Skidmore, your quarterback, and we know that there's some schools looking at him. Who else besides him, though? Skid's a pretty good player, but uh, you know, every, everybody else kind of we're doing it by committee a little bit. Uh, you know, we got some young receivers uh, that have been playing pretty good with LaRose and Jones and and a senior tailback, uh, actually two senior tailbacks that have been packing the load with Shaw and Ho uh, Weaver. And then uh, Baby T. Adewadi at fullback, a sophomore kid that's, that's really kind of stabilized us a little bit. Tell me about Logan as you game plan for a team like Logan. What are, what are the keys that you look for from your team against them? You know, gal, watching film, it looks like deja vu. It looks like uh, the, the Nelson brothers just don't go away. And Chase is a pretty good player, and he looks just like both of the, both of his older brothers. So, yeah, we got a lot of concern about trying to corral him, and he throws it well and he runs it very well, and uh, we got a lot of respect for him. All right, good luck tonight, Coach. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you much. Well, the captain's out at midfield for the coin toss. <laughs> Jeff Fred Fernandez, we talked about the guy knows how to win. He's instilling that winning tradition back at Roy. Yes, he's he's had several coaching positions around the state, and I'm looking at the notes here. Fernandez has won 100, 101 games, and that's the 15th uh, winning as coach active right now in the state of Utah. So he, he obviously knows what he's doing. His teams play hard, and they've always, they always have been good. Well, we were having a conversation with him right after that interview about. And I mentioned, man, you're young. You've only got 16 seniors. Well, they have 18. 
He kind of looked at me and said, well, we've only got about 60 kids total. We need more kids out there. You know, what really killed Roy Athletics was when they built Fremont. That took a lot of kids they all the way up to Hooper, and Hooper is straight out west of, of Roy High School. It's actually closer to Roy, and, and you know, you, you look at it and you think, as Roy starts building their program back up, some of those kids that were maybe, because of the open, open enrollment, some of those kids that were maybe going to Fremont, who has a pretty good football tradition, they might start coming back to Roy, and, and he can start putting that tradition back in place here with the Royals. As you know, they're off to a 4 0 start, looking for 5 0 for the first time since 1975. Yeah, Eric, I think that's a big key to it is, you know, these kids will go to where they think they can win and get a chance to play. And, and I think for, uh, Coach Fernandez has, has put that tradition back now at Roy, where, where like you said, they're not losing those kids to those other schools. And, you know, you obviously said they're 4 0, and you can see it in, in the results. They're starting to really play, you know, some good football at Roy. And they're, you know, I think tonight's game. Uh, it's these are I think two of the best teams in the region. I think tonight will go a long ways in determining who is going to be the region champion with the with the winner of this game. Logan's beaten Roy 13 straight times going back to uh, what 19 I want to say 1995. They've beaten Roy 13 straight, so it's a it's a big order to fill for the Royals to come in here and win. But they just about did it last year. It took some last minute heroics by by Taylor Compton to get that win. Yeah, I, I came to that game and, and uh, it was amazing. Logan looked beat and, they, and uh, Taylor Compton made one of the best plays of the season, you know, rushed in and blocked the punt and it came right back to him and I think he went about 60, 65 yards for the touchdown to give Logan the win. So just an amazing play by Taylor. You know, Roy, I thought for the whole game, pretty much had him beat. Taylor Compton, he's one of those players that uh, just, he seems to just get it done, number Number 19, or excuse me, for the number 19 is Chase Nelson, but Compton just seems to get it done. Number 15, he's only 5'9", 175 pounds, but he's a gamer. They call, they call him a gamer, don't they? You know, when I was thinking about tonight coming to the game, that I knew T Taylor would get brought up, and he is just an amazing athlete. He's, he's a gamer, whether it's blocking a punt or a, a punt for a touchdown or catching the touchdown or even shooting three-pointers in basketball. He won a few games right then, so he is definitely a gamer, and he's just a great, great athlete. Kid you'd love having on his team. Roy won the toss, and they declined, so they'll be kicking off. It's homecoming at Crimson Field. The Grizzlies hosting the Royals of Roy, the only two unbeaten playing each other this weekend in high school football in the state of Utah. And about the five-yard line is Tanner McIntyre. McIntyre right back up the middle. And just as he breaks to the outside, he's tripped up, and he'll get up to about the 31. And that's where the Logan offense, led by Chase Nelson, will take the field. Nelson, he leads the team in rushing, 66 attempts, 248 yards, and two touchdowns. About four yards per carry. And you just wonder, this is this is opposing coaches. This is the last of the Nelson. <laughs> I, I heard Freddie say that before the game. You know, how many are there? Because <laughs> they've just had all three of them had such amazing careers. Five receivers, and they can do many things out of this. Nelson can run out of it on that quarterback draw, or he can throw. And it looks like press coverage down beneath, underneath to Artist and Nelson in trouble. Down he goes. Nelson gets sacked. Nelson sacked by Skyler Hoover. Big sack on that one. The, the, everybody was covered. That was just a coverage sack, I guess is what they call it, because there was nobody to go to. That's a 14-yard loss, and that's the good and the bad of it. The running around can extend a play, but it can also end up costing you some yardage. Nelson looking. He found that man coverage, and it's Compton. Taylor Compton. They had him in man coverage underneath him, and it looked like they passed him off to the safety, and Nelson finds Compton in the seam. Really good throw there. Right on cue, Compton comes up with a, another huge play. 44 yards. Compton set a record for receptions last year, and there's his first one of the night. Just letting everybody know he's here. Hi, I'm 15. I'm Taylor. I catch passes. Nelson's going to keep it. Loses the football, and Roy is there. Nelson stripped, and the Royals with the first break of the game. 
Nelson gained two yards before he lost the football. Looked like Roy did a good job of stripping the ball there. You know, it wasn't a big hit, but it looked like he put his hand on the ball and ripped it out. Yeah, he looked like he was right across where the ball was, and as he spun around. Yeah. In big games, turnovers are always the – seems it comes down to who wins the turnover battle, so I hope that doesn't kill Logan. Well, number six, Tyler Skidmore, the 6'3 junior. The college is looking at him already. Turns and hands to Weaver. Weaver, the 6'1 senior, picks up a yard, and that's it. I know that uh, Skidmore's taken a recruiting trip. Uh, well, he was invited to come down and watch a game down at BYU, and BYU beat Texas. I know at a game earlier in the season, the Utah State coaches were scouting him. He can do it. He's like Nelson. He can do it with his arm or his legs. Yeah, he's a really good-looking athlete, you know, tall and got some size to him. Like you said, getting recruited by a lot of colleges right now. Two wide receivers as they hand it off again to Weaver. Weaver works his way to the outside, forward to the 40-yard line, and another one-yard gain. It'll be third down and eight. Logan teams under Mike Favero always have a pretty good offense, but they are championship contenders when their defense matches that offense. And this year, that Logan defense has been pretty stout. They've been really good. And first two plays there, you know, up the middle, we just were, you know, we're holding our own the line of scrimmage and looks good so far. Third down and about seven. Logan showing blitz. Here they come right up the gut. Skidmore's in trouble and down he goes. Blitz in the A gaps and there was nowhere for Skidmore to go as he loses five. That was a great call defense there. Like I said, I looked like there were two more Logan guys than there were Roy blockers. So just a great stop by the defense after the, after the turnover. Well, they had four down linemen and then brought those backers both up into the A gaps and just hit those right at the snap. That's good to get Roy off the field after that turnover. Roy loses three yards. Low line drive kick and McIntyre will have a chance at a return. McIntyre picks it up at about the 27, falls forward to the 32, a five yard return and Logan's offense will take the field. Icon Health and Fitness is one of our game sponsors. We're one of the world's largest developers, manufacturers, and marketers of fitness equipment with brads that include Proform, Reebok, Westlo, and Jump King, Gold's Gym, Health Rider. That's Icon Health and Fitness, longtime sponsor of high school sports on the Valley Channel. Four wide receivers, and McIntyre will lead block for Nelson. Nelson spins out of trouble and forward to a first down at the 44-yard line. That's an 11-yard gain, and let's take a look at the replay. Oh, too quick. They're too quick up to the line. Up tempo offense. <laughs> he wouldn't really call it necessarily a hurry up because they'll come up and survey the defense and then call the plays from the sideline. You told me once, you should stand down here on the sideline and listen to them call plays. If it's you like hear NASA. Huh? This is unbelievable, all, this, all, this, all the calls going out there. I would get confused. <laughs> Underneath McIntyre has it. McIntyre hauled McIntyre down after a short game. About three. Second and seven. And four down linemen look for Roy. And right up the middle they go with... Nelson, he's hauled down, but not until he makes it third and short. He's just so quick to hit the hole, Jeff. Yeah, what a weapon, you know, when you can just run him straight up the middle like that. you got to respect the pass, so it really puts the defense on their heels. Third and short for the Grizzlies. Roy may bring the blitz. They're showing it with one of their linebackers. Cody Hobbs is sneaking up there. So is Weaver, and they're coming. Quick hit to Compton. Compton puts a man on his heels, and he's in space. Compton fumbles. Picked up, though. No, it's into the end zone, and now picked up by the Royals. It looked like Tyson Jensen had gotten on it, and the Royals pick it up in the end zone for a touchback. Ah, that's too bad. What a great play, and the 
the Roy defender made a great swipe at the ball and just knocked it out, and then it, it looked like Logan was going to recover. That's just too bad. Now look right here. Look at him. Whoa. Get that, that guy on his heels. Move. And look for that swat. If somebody comes up behind him and 23 swats 23 right there. Boom. Yeah, at about the 15-yard line, it's swatted out of there by Nate Jones after a 35-yard gain. Second lost fumble for the Grizzlies. So the yardage counts, but that's it. Look out. Skidmore hit as he throws. Ball's out, and Logan's on it. Are they going to call it a fumble or an incomplete pass? Fumble. So nobody wants the football as Jaden Connor comes out of there saying, I'll take it. Three turnovers in less than five minutes. This is <laughs> so now the Grizzlies back about where they started. No score with 7-11 to play in the first quarter. And the Grizzlies knocking on the door first and goal at the eight-yard line. And the Grizzlies... Up at the line and ready to go. Nelson looking underneath. Now he throws the out pattern. The ball is caught at the one yard line. So it's about a seven yard completion to Compton. And it's second and goal at the one. Nelson right up the gut. Touchdown, Logan. Logan loves to run that play, get up get up early, just put uh, Chase under center. They've done it for years, gets the defense off, off guard, and ended up being a pretty easy touchdown for Logan right there. Here's that sack again, see who it was. Caden Anderson comes around the corner and just lays the wood to Skidmore. Yeah, he didn't see it coming at all, did he? Jaden Connor picks it up, and two plays later, the Grizzlies are in the end zone and a 7-0 lead at homecoming at Logan High School. Logan leads seven nothing, and here's why. Boom! Jaden Connor ends up picking up the Skidmore fumble after Caden Anderson just really laid a lick yeah, on he, Tyler Skidmore. He, he had just no came chance. out off the edge there, untouched, and made a great play. Got the ball out. That's two sacks by the Grizzlies' defense. Logan with that high short one. That's going to go out of bounds. Ball goes out of bounds. And that's about where it'll be placed. Right about where it goes out of bounds. So you're not out anything. And if you get your guys under it. Yep. That, I think that was on purpose to just mm -hmm. kind of float it over there and try to get those fast kids down there. If that kick was a few yards shorter, I think Logan would have got that. Well, the kicker was clear over about three people from the far sideline. So, yeah, it was by design. He put it out of bounds right at the 35, and that's where they place it anyway if it goes out of bounds. <laughs> I think they feel pretty good about their defense. They're pulling that out. Skidmore under center. He's got Etuati behind him. Skidmore can't find his intended receiver, so now he's trying to get out of trouble. And he doesn't for long. Another. Loss on the play for Roy. It's a loss of four. Yeah, that, that play looked broken right from the start, and then Skidmore tried to make a play out of it. Logan with some good D there. Minus 14 yards for Skidmore. He's been sacked twice and then caught for a loss on that play, which Scores is a running play. 
Yeah, so far Logan's defense has looked really good in this first quarter. Skidmore with a half roll now looks back across the middle. Weaver goes high and he's walloped as he can't quite get there for that high pass. Kyle Gillenskog took him out. That time, plenty of time for Skidmore as they moved him out of the pocket. Yeah, he had a guy open too, just barely overthrew him. Yeah, that was Gillenskog, the safety that lowered the boom on that one. He did. He said, I will be your host. I will be here all <laughs> night. Which is exactly what you want to say. That's the hardest thing for the receivers going over the middle. If you, if you take punishment like that, it'll, it'll wear on your nerves. Third down and 14. Now they roll it the other way. Skidmore has a man wide open. It's Brown. Brown inside Logan territory on third and 14, but there's a flag in the backfield. Looked like a breakdown in Logan's secondary that play. But he rolled out and had a guy wide open down there. Holding on Roy, so it's coming back. It's a nice play there for the Royals, but it's coming back. Maybe that's why Skidmore had that little extra time. That's a big call. I think Roy really needed some old man and needed that play, so it's going to hurt him. That's the first penalty of the game with 5.49 to play in the first period. A 7-0 lead for the Logan Grizzlies. Hey, the Salt Lake Express, one of our sponsors. This guy right here, he's the Salt Lake. He's the Logan Express. Spotting that ball 10 yards back. Personal door-to-door -door pickup and drop-off service to and from the Salt Lake City Airport every hour or economic service from from convenient Cache Valley locations, just call Salt Lake Express. 5 wide receivers. And now the officials are going to kind of chat about this. I wonder if they're looking at the placement of the ball. That's a 10-yard penalty, but it's a spot foul as well. And it should still be third down, so they're just making sure they got it all right. Now it's third and a lot. 27, third and 27. Probably try to roll him out again. He's been getting better protected as he rolls out. It's a three-man rush now, and they blow it dead again. And it's going to be third and 32. It's a procedure penalty on Roy. One of the pen, one of the receivers left a little early. Usually, that's the guy that's going to get the ball. <laughs> yep, just a little overexcited. Want to go down there and get the ball? Boy, they have third and long now. What is it? Third and 32. 32. Wow. You never did that as a six foot four receiver, did you? You never got a little excited and got off the ball early. I jumped off a few times, yes. Oh. And that's bad when you're as tall as you are. Everybody can see it. Right. <laughs> the Logan crowd starts to make some noise on third. And they need to get to about fourth north for a first down. Skidmore steps up. Now gets out of trouble. Looking downfield right at the sticks, it's picked off. Coming over and picking it off is Garrett Wright, the junior. Wow, great play by Garrett. That read the ball perfectly, made a great break on it, and great catch. It was a good job by Skidmore to keep the play alive and get out of trouble. And he had a receiver right at the sticks and then right, and just like that, it's a blur. He had Logan LaRose right there at the yeah, sticks. When he first threw it, I thought that might be completion, but what a great play. He broke on the ball nicely. Pretty good arm there by Skidmore. He put that when that was about 40 yards on a rope. He's a good-looking quarterback. He's been under some pressure, but I like the way he throws. Nelson's under pressure. Hit as he throws. Artist is there, and he can't come up with it. The first incompletion of the night for Chase Nelson. I know they've been talking about Chad a lot. I heard all summer he's he's the fastest guy on the team, and I think they need to, as the season goes and tonight, exploit him down the field because he's got some. He's real, real speedy, real fast. Always seem to find solid receivers out here at Logan. And at the bottom of your screen, Harmon Rector is a sophomore that's got a big future ahead of him. Caught a couple of big passes at Northridge. There's Artist. <laughs> Artist spins his way down to the 25-yard line. 14-yard gain and a first down. This is vintage Logan 
offense. It seems, looks like they have the Roy a little bit uh, confused with the run or pass. It's just, it's just tough to guard. And so often you don't have to account for the quarterback with somebody, but if the quarterback can run, you got to have a defender for him. Here he goes again. Yep. Nelson runs the ball. Nelson still on his feet. And dragging guys inside the 10 yard line to the eight. 17 yard run by Nelson. Great read there by Chase. You know, he went out, didn't have a receiver, turns it up, and that's just, that's just his ability, you know. And look right here. Such a weapon, and he's done that all year. Breaks tackles and gets six, seven, eight more yards. He's not big, but he runs like a guy that's a little brother. Yeah. There's the throw. There's a catch. And there's a touchdown for the Grizzlies. And that's Rector. We talked about Hartford Rector a couple of plays ago. And right on cue, there he is. An eight-yard touchdown throw from Nelson to Rector. And Rector, like I said, is a sophomore. Andrew Reyes. That was a great play. Rector's great catch. 6'1", 170 pounds. And the kick's blocked. And your point is blocked. So the PAT attempt is blocked. Looked like Jones got it with 4-2 to play in the first quarter. Logan 13, Roy 0. Clark Salt Lake Express and the airport shuttle have merged and become one. So we still have doorstep service and it's about the same price as it was before. Our focus now is to try to provide as many opportunities for people who, who need to have the ability to get to and from Salt Lake when they want. They don't want to wait at the airport for two hours. They also don't want to be driving around the valley when they get here. And you bring us to a location that leaves on time. We'll have another vehicle take you here to save time comfortably and, and that main vehicle goes 12 times a day on schedule both leaving the valley and coming back. Yeah, look at this catch by Rector, elevation. Boy, that's nice, and that's what they teach you, you know, as a wide receiver. Catch the ball at the apex, got his feet down. That was, for a sophomore especially, to make that play, that's incredible. He got a toe down, and you only need to get one down. That's about what he got. Boy, I don't know what happened. That ball's out of there. Hobbs hurt his knee. That's why. Hobbs just all of a sudden, and he's down on the field. The returner for Logan, I just wondered, what did he do? He just went down like he'd been like he'd been hit by a rock, and I'm afraid that they maybe lost Hobbs to a knee injury. Yeah, that didn't look good. He just he just kind of buckled, and I don't even know if he got hit. It looked like no, the ball, he, didn't. he just lost, he just let the ball go, but it's like he that, looks like it, it doesn't look good. That knee or ankle just went, and he did. He let the ball go. So you know it didn't. That hurt, whatever it was. Nobody hit him. The next thing you know, the ball's squirting out of there. And for oh, Roy, yeah, that's the, their third turnover. Now yeah, he's not. They're not putting much weight on that, though. As he was returning it, he just kind of like he stepped funny, and all of a sudden he went down. Yeah, just like he's. And he let the ball. His foot caught and just and then just let the ball go. And you hope he's okay, but it certainly doesn't look great. No. Nope. That wasn't Hobbs. That was LaRose, and he's one of their top receivers. Here's Nelson again. Nelson carries the ball down to 15. He picks up nine, and Roy just back on their heels. Everything. Kind of blowing up for the Royals. Yeah, Logan has all the momentum right now, it seems like. And I think we're winning the line, the battle of the lines, both defense and offense. We're getting big holes and, and stuffing them good on their on their lungs. And there's a short run for Nelson. You said that too loud. They heard you. <laughs> yeah, right on cue. Yeah. That's a three-yard run. 15-yard line, first down, Grizzlies. But after his last two of 17 and 9, the three-yard run is a win for the Roy defense. They want to get off the field without giving up another touchdown. There's 318, and the clock's running to play in the first quarter. Roy's turned it over three times in this quarter. Logan's turned it over twice. 
Nelson looks underneath. He has his man. It's Compton. Compton steps out of bounds. Inside the 10. He picks up six. You just get a feeling that just Logan's about ready to really take this game over. It just seems like everything they do is working. There's the replay to Compton. Compton with 92 yards on four catches. Five wide receivers. And this gives running lanes to Nelson, and there he goes. Nelson, up the middle. Nelson caught at the five, and Weaver won't let go of him. They spot him down to about three. It's, I think it's really important that Roy stop Logan here, even to a field goal. Four yards. And I don't know if he got it. It's third down. Yeah, there was a yard. Didn't look like he got much there. They're going to call an official's timeout. For measurement. Official timeout. They're going to measure it. Yeah, I like to say earlier, if, you know, if Logan punches this, I mean, it would be really disheartening for Roy to go down 20, 20 to nothing in the first quarter, especially getting two turnovers from, from Logan also. Yeah. Their turnovers. Did you say they have three already? Roy has three. It's fourth and short. Logan has two. Roy has three. The first time yeah, Logan turned it over, Roy lost four down. yards on their series and had to punt. And the second time, Roy turned it right back over on the very next play. So it's fourth and goal, or excuse me, fourth and a yard, less than a yard, inside the inside the five yard line. This would be a huge, huge stop for Roy right here. And Nelson hollering out to his receivers. He's going to keep, tries to go off the end, and I don't know. Let's see. I don't think he got it. Andre Martinez, a sophomore. He made a great play. Came in. Coming and off the edge. Not only did he grab him, he kind of pulled him backwards, and they're going to measure it again. There's one of those sophomores, one of those underclassmen for Roy. They're just, they're so high on their underclassmen in this program. Let's take a look here. Dave, the D lineman right there on the left side. Boy, Made I don't know. Play. He may have got back to the line of scrimmage, but he you know didn't he need fell punch. forward there. It looked on live, you know, that he might have not got it. He didn't get it. And the ball turns over on down. He lost some real estate. Yeah, he did. No, like I said, that's a that's a gigantic play for Roy right there, just to keep their momentum, keep the kids in the game. So they may have lost one of their top receivers in Logan LaRose, who's fourth in 4A in touchdown receptions, tied with Taylor Compton in that category. As he, on a kick return a few minutes ago, buckled, nobody hit him, down he went, he lets the ball go. That's who it looked like was LaRose, number two. We thought maybe it was Hobbs, number three at first. Here's the screen underneath. Screen pass complete. And they gain a little bit of breathing room. The number three, Cody Hobbs. About four yards, and that's Hobbs the on the receiving end. The that's the first complete pass for Skidmore. <laughs> Under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Sorry, Jeff. No, that's kind of a kind of a dangerous pass out of the end zone there, but it worked for him. They got some yards. Skidmore with the give to Hobbs. Hobbs, well, he picked up about three, so it'll be third and short. This 
big play here for Logan's defense now with uh, giving up on fourth down. If they could stop him here, they would end up with some really good field position after a punt. So big play for Logan D right here. The last punt for Roy wasn't a great one. So I don't know if that was anomalous or if the punter just doesn't have a big leg. Here's the key throw, and it's picked by Compton. Compton was watching that one the entire way. Four turnovers for Roy in the first quarter. Well, Taylor just, like I said, he just, there's a replay, just broke on the ball, and just made a beautiful play. Too bad he barely got tripped up. He was headed for the end zone. He just sat on that pattern, didn't he? It was just a little sit-down pattern. Compton was doing the sitting. He just seems like every game, you know, great players make great plays, and Compton just, he just seems to be everywhere on the field and just making plays every game. What a great player. Compton to the far side, Rector to this side, see if they go after him or if they run it, and they run it. Nelson, Nelson rips out of a tackle and scores. So a stand earlier, if not a goal line stand, a red zone stand earlier by the Roy defense. And now on the first play, they give up the touchdown. Yeah. There's a replay right there. Uh, Chase just busting off the left side, breaks a tackle, and does what he does, gets in the end zone. Logan will go for two to try to make it a 21-0 lead. That's six turnovers in the first quarter. That's probably approaching a state record or something. That's incredible. Six combined turnovers between these two teams. Oh, Logan's lighting up for two here. Forty-seven seconds to play in the first. Compton in motion. Nelson looks to the back of the end zone and hits the crossbar. Nineteen nothing. Logan with the three-score lead here on homecoming. Here at Lewiston State Bank, we offer lots of different loan products to meet your needs. We're happy to work with you and hope that you would enjoy working with us. We had to take out an automobile loan, and so we came into Lewiston State Bank, and she was so good. She worked with me really, really well. We are proud to have been serving our customers for over 100 years with personalized, friendly service. Please come in and meet your new friends at Lewiston State Bank. Well, here's the fourth turnover of the period for Roy. Yeah, that's just a Neil Vice throw. I mean, unless, you know, we didn't have the wide angle on that, but boy, he looks like, it looked like he just turned and threw it out there right to Compton. He did, and Compton was sitting on the pattern, and that turnover led to Logan offense trotting out on the field, and one play later is Riley Nelson. Great, or great. Me, Chase Nelson. Chase, yeah. <laughs> great, bright, you know, break a, broke a great tackle right Nate there. And got in. The outside. Back to live action, and Nate Jones returns that kick up near the 40 yard line. So, good starting field position for the Royals. Looks like about the 37 is where they'll spot that. Roy trailing 19 to nothing. I've wondered how many times I will pull that trick, calling Chase Nelson either DJ or Riley. I, over the years, I've been confused too because they, especially in a football uniform, they all look exactly alike. <laughs> Skidmore gives it off to Weaver. Weaver cuts back and picks up four. That's what Roy needs to do right now, just settle down. They're a good offense. Get a, get some first downs, get some get some drive going, and hopefully try to get back into this game because right now it's, it's all Logan. Second down and six. Five seconds left in the period. See if Roy gets a playoff. They do. A quick give. And up up the middle. 
believe that was Nate Jones on the carry. And they give that one to Baby T, Eduardi. That's Nate. Baby T, Eduardi, the sophomore, with his first carry with that hair hanging out. I saw that in the, the program. It is. It says Baby T right in the program. That's the end of the first period of play. It's all Logan, 19 nothing. Back after this. Start the second period of play. They trail 19 0. Skidmore, nice pocket, steps up underneath, had a receiver, and Skyler Hoover was lit up. And he drops the football. Looks like it was Williams that did the lighting. Yeah, Skidmore took a shot there and threw it behind his receiver, but he, he it didn't look like he'd get the first down, even if he would have made the completion. Bracken Williams, the junior. Logan's playing great defense tonight. Yeah, they really are. Tanner McIntyre sets up shot back at his own 20-yard line. As Hobbs on to kick. Hobbs gets it down to the one, and then one of the players rolls into the end zone with it so they'll start at the 20 you know you're talking about coaching you and I were talking about coaching and and it's got to be a tough job coaching teenage boys oh yeah I mean like you said they're you know we forget that they're 16 17 year old kids you know and have all kinds of different agendas but uh like you said I think that's what's kind of happened to Roy a little bit tonight you know you get your you get down you have some turnovers and things don't go your way so they need some they just need a couple good plays and they can get back in this game. Nelson has everything going to the right. Nelson's pass complete to Chad Artist on the sideline. The other right. He had it going to the left and he hits Artist for about 14 yards. And a first down. Good play by Logan. Just a little hookup pattern there by Artist. And Chase hit him right in the numbers. Good play. Two catches, 28 yards for Artist. Nelson is seven of eight, 131 yards, and a touchdown. He's rushed for two touchdowns. Nelson's gonna keep this one. Nothing in the middle, so he bounces it outside. Picks up you know, about four yards. He's got 48 yards on 11 carries. That's always big on first down, you know, get that when you run it, get those four yards, and it just gives you a great down and distance on second down. McIntyre out of the backfield, and they throw to him. Uses a block from Compton. That's right at the sticks. And it's a first down. Right at the sticks, so six yards to McIntyre. McIntyre, his second catch, nine yards. He's thrown to four receivers. He's completed to four receivers, has Nelson. Nelson's going to run. Nice hole for him. Nelson. Weaver gets blocked downfield, and then Nelson stays alive. 
out nearly to the 40-yard line. That's going to be a 15-yard run. And that's a little bit scary. Yeah, he takes some shots. What a great read. You know, he just he backed up, saw the hole, and hit it and picked up 15 yards. Roy's just having a real tough time stopping Logan at this point. Well, they're not tackling really well. There are a lot of guys you can see in that replay putting their head down. and If all you can see is grass, that's all you're going to hit. Especially with Chase. Boy, Artist has got blockers. He's got all sorts of blockers downfield. He's finally caught by Jones. That play was set up great. You know, he caught that slant in and had three, four guys right out there in middle field blocking downfield. That was a great play. And there's Artist showing his speed. He, he really is fast. Three catches, 46 yards. And there's 10.29 to play in the first half. Logan on the move again. No answers for this Logan offense from Roy. We knew the, the Logan offense is tough to stop. 10, and Roy, the first they're a 4-0 team. And Coach Fernandez kind of joked around in that opener with me about, uh, yeah, we've been lucky a couple of times. Well, you know, you still won the games whether you're lucky or not. And said we might need some luck against these guys tonight. Yeah, it just, it just seems like so far in the game that Roy's just a little out of sync, both offensively and defensively. You know, the turnovers obviously haven't helped that, but, you know, Logan just seems like they're sticking to their game plan, running the plays, and they're pretty much getting anything they want at this point. And I thought, I thought uh, you know, Roy would put up, put up a, a stiffer challenge on defense, but, you know, Logan over the years, and just like this year, they're, they're, just, they're, just, they're just tough to stop. Now Logan LaRose who went out with the injury earlier. I see him over on the sideline. He's on crutches for Roy. And he's got his pads off. So he won't be coming back. Nelson looking downfield and it goes past the defender and into the hands of Compton for a 23 yard touchdown. Beautifully thrown ball. I thought that looked like it might get picked off and it just, just floated perfectly over the outstretched defender's hands. And there's our man Compton again, making plays. All he does. 115 yards and a touchdown on five catches for Compton. And Logan will go for two. And they're looking in the back of that end zone for Rector on the jump ball. He can't come up with it. So it's 25 to nothing with 10-15 to play in the first half. Homecoming looking good for the Grizzlies. The optical industry is changing an awful lot right at the moment. A lot of new advances in lenses. Uh, and styles of frames. Right at the moment, the most popular thing are big, black, chunky, lucky frames. Um, for, for both guys and gals, we help someone uh, look better, uh, not only from this side, but from the, from the outside in. Well, here's another look, and it's a game of inches. And look how close this is to be in pick six one way, and instead it's six points for the Grizzlies. Yep, great route, great throw. Jones down the near sideline. Hurdles a man, he's out to the 26 before he's brought down by Williams. Jones, 23, is a good looking athlete. Uh, for Roy. There's baby T. Etuati. I'll tell you what, I've coached against that kid in like eighth <laughs> and ninth grade ball. He's he's a big kid. He's a sophomore. Where does the where does big T come from? What's the baby baby T? Baby I'm T. I'm not yeah. sure, but they had a they had a story about him on the KSL News a few nights ago. His mom died oh. of a heart attack right before a game. He played in that game, and there was like a miraculous ending to that game on a tip ball for a touchdown and. You know, it was kind of a heartwarming story. They, the team had, had dedicated that game to Baby T, and he's played really well for the Royals as a sophomore this year. Coach Fernandez 
said his his cousin who's out with a with a knee injury is another really good athlete as well that they're really missing he thinks he can be an excellent excellent running back yeah I, I heard your interview before the game with with coach fernandez and he's really high on on that kid just kind of a freak knee and injury to him to put him out for the rest of the season but again one of those underclassmen so roy roy's probably going to be pretty decent for for a few years to come. Here's Weaver, Weaver turning the corner up near the first down marker. Close to the first down marker. Let's Around see. About a yard short, it looks like. It looks like it. Maybe not. No, the head official saying it's first down. Move the sticks. So it'll be first and 10. So Weaver, five carries, 16 yards. This drive is, is really, I've said that a couple of times, but I think this drive is really big for Roy. You know, if they could go down and put some points on the board right here, you know, give the kids some confidence and help them keep them stay, and stay in this game. Kind of stop the bleeding a little yes, bit. Yes, huh? exactly. You're not going to get it back all at once, and so you just have to kind of be patient. There's the little give. Hand off to number 20. Off the Skyler wing play Hoover. for Skyler Hoover, and Hoover goes nowhere. That play just too slow to develop, and he loses a yard. Yeah, Logan's defensive line did a great job on that play. Just everybody stayed in their assignment, and they ran it around that end, and nowhere to go. Second and 11 for Skidmore. Skidmore back to pass. Underneath, another Ooh. one just about picked yeah, off. Yeah, it's almost picked off by Garrett Wright. Think of hate there now. And, and now it's going to be third down and 11. Garrett wishes he had that one over. It looked like if he caught that, he might be running, still running. Can't really see on that replay, but. Third and 11 for the Royals. Looking to get something going. As they trail 25 to nothing. Two undefeated teams, but it's been all Logan. Roy with four turnovers in the first quarter. Skidmore down the middle of the field. There's turnover number five and interception number three for Skidmore. Yeah, that just looked like a little bit of depth, depth uh, desperation from Skidmore. You know, he's trying to make a big play, make something happen. The receivers weren't over and open. He, he should have never threw that one. Good play by Logan, though. Just playing center field out there was Kyle Gillenskog. Two interceptions all season for Skidmore. He's thrown three tonight. That's five turnovers now for Roy. Yep. Two fumbles and three interceptions. Nelson. Looking for the big strike. Compton drops oh. it. It was right in his hands, and I think the DB may have flashed in front of him, and he just lost it. I think that's exactly what happened, Eric. You know, Compton rarely drops the ball. It looked like the guy just got his hand up there and, and probably broke Taylor's eye contact with the ball. Great throw. I mean, the throw was just absolutely perfect. He couldn't have run it out there and handed it to him better. Mm -hmm. That's only the second incomplete pass for Nelson, and flag here's a flag, and if this is on Logan, it'd be their first penalty of the game. And it is. Next week, an in-valley rivalry game, Mountain Crest visits Skyview. Skyview off to a fast start, one of the highest scoring teams in the state. They're averaging over 40 points per game. They really have had a good start, haven't they, to this year? They have. They're going for the home run ball again to Artist, and it's a little bit overthrown and nearly picked Artist. off by Cameron Shaw. Chad Artist actually did a good job. You know, you teach receivers, the ball's not come to you, make sure it doesn't get intercepted, and he made a great play on that and make sure it didn't get it intercepted. Then throws him out of bounds also. <laughs> Just for good measure. Yeah. Second 
7.51 to play in the first half. Third and 15. Nelson.